thanks. Friday night. Everybody feels good, man. We're going to have a good time. Everybody's drinking. Let's talk about my dad. Let's go. All right? <laughs> Let's do it, man. I uh, grew up in a weird house, man. I grew up, uh, all guys in my house, my brother and I were raised by my dad, because uh, my parents got divorced when I was six months old. That was my fault, not a big deal, but. Uh, but a weird, like, masculine environment, like, no crying, obviously, no crying, right? It, was, it wasn't a rule. My dad wasn't like, be a man, don't cry. I just, I never saw him cry, right? I never saw my brother cry. I will tell you this, if you're not exposed to crying for the first time in your life, until you're 16 years old, first time you see it, it will freak you out. It is unnerving, man. I remember the first time I met a girlfriend of mine, I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what to say. I said what my dad would say to me. I was like, you better cut that out before I give you something to cry about. It's not gonna, it's not gonna help the situation. It was weird, it was like a tough guy environment though. My dad was tough, my brother was tough, so I always thought of myself as tough, as you can tell by my cardigan. And, um, <laughs> I was real like, like a fighty kind of, like I was real competitive with my brother. Uh, like he was older than me, so he was bigger and stronger. I always wanted to beat him at stuff, but I was especially competitive with him because when I was three, my brother put me in the dryer. Uh, yeah, like fully, like just for his own amusement to see if I would get smaller or whatever. Uh, but like closed the door, climbed up on top to press the button. My grandma snatched him up. Man, you remember stuff like that, man. That sticks with you. Like even to this day, I'm afraid of tight, dark spaces and the smell of bounce. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's terrifying, man, but, but he was bigger and stronger and better at sports and everything, but he was also cool. He was cool. Like, my brother lost his virginity in a fort. That's pretty cool. That's like a genuine wooden in our backyard, plywood and cushions we found, forts. The girl was like, uh, do you have protection? He's like, we're in a fort. What, are you serious? <laughs> Give your head a shake. <laughs> Man, I'm still still competitive with my brother, man. I fight my brother every year at my niece's birthday party. Uh, she's six. And uh, we go every year, he rents like an inflatable castle for the kids to jump around in. But then as soon as I get there, we kick the kids out, put the boxing gloves on, and I try to avenge my childhood, right? And uh, so we're in there, uh, we're in the cage, right? We're doing our thing uh, in, in June. And oh, I call it the cage, because it's like the UFC, but it's bouncy. So. Uh, <laughs> And we're doing, our, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I got my moves and stuff, right? I'm like, I'm ducking and weaving. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to pull a rope-a-dope and stuff. I did research. I have moves. And, uh, and my brother's like, at one point, he's got to take a knee, right? He's winded. He's just like, oh, man. Oh, your stamina is wearing me out. And I was like, not the first time I've heard that. And then I was like, wait, am I flirting with my brother? And then while he's down there, I have the thought, for the first time in my life, I think, I could win, right? I never beat my brother in a fight in my entire life, and he's been beating me up since I was a little kid, and now he's got a heart condition. So I was like, <laughs> it was great. And, and he gets up, he realizes he can't outlast me in the fight, right? He's just got to knock me out one punch. So he gets up, and he's just throwing haymakers, right? And, and, uh, and we spend probably the next, like, ten minutes each thinking we're both about five seconds away from winning, because he thinks he's going to knock me out, and I think he's going to die. So... <laughs> We're going, and, and then there's a point where the fight turns in my favor, and I think, like, I, I realize I'm going to win, and I just, if you're a younger brother, you will know this, if you're a younger brother, there's no greater feeling in the world than beating the living crap out of your older brother. It is beautiful and heartwarming. I don't know why there's not more songs about it, but... <laughs> Just feed them. And there's no sadder sound in the world, no sadder sound than a little voice from outside the castle going, please stop hurting my dad. <laughs> nope. Happy birthday. <laughs> It was amazing. It was a great moment in my life. And uh, we're sitting at the patio uh, table afterwards reading birthday cake, and it's my brother and me, and my dad's there. And I'm so excited about this beautiful victory. I'm like, Dad, did you see that? Did you see what I finally did? Did you see? And my dad's real emotionally reserved, right? I'm like, did you see what, did you see how I finally beat him in a fight? He's like, eh. I think he got you on points. And I was like, you prick. Are you serious? You can't let me have this beautiful victory, man? Just my whole life. Yeah, here's a quick impression, by the way. Uh, this is the only impression I do. This is uh, my father expressing pride towards his sons. Watch for this. This is very subtle. Yep. <laughs> he just walks off on oh, you bastards. Like, my whole life is like trying to guess the emotions of an animal. I was like, what, what are you happy? Are you, ha are you disappointed? Are you my whole life would have been easier if my dad had a tail. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> My dad caught me having sex once. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's gonna be crazy, I'm about to tell the story. You're gonna freak out. 
uh, I was at right at the end of high school, and uh, I had gone away for a month to visit my grandparents, which I always did. And uh, and I came home, so I want to get reacquainted with my girlfriend, right? So she and I are in the basement getting reacquainted. And uh, that's stupid. It's not like how I do it or anything. <laughs> no. You're tickling me. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, and my dad came home, and usually my dad would uh, walk in the door and he would throw his keys down, right? And I would hear it, like a two-minute warning, which is totally enough time. And, he would, and then he would, usually he would go upstairs and he would change out of his work clothes, and then he would come downstairs and say hi. But I had been out of town, he's all excited to see me, so he comes in, he throws his keys down, and I was like, cool, I got two minutes. And then he hit the basement stairs, and I was like, I have zero minutes. So oh, God. And, and he comes down the stairs, and eight stairs does not take very long, especially if you were at the bottom naked. It goes like this, so fast. And it also just like warps your whole perception of time. It all stretches out, slows down. I'm looking around, I'm like, where are my pants? <laughs> and I just snatch them away, pull up a blanket. And my dad walks into the room and then takes way too long to realize what's going on. <laughs> Just starts a conversation with us. Everybody's like, hey, how was the flight? Everything was good? And I was like, nah, 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 nah. Because I'm smooth and debonair. And he's like, he's like, hey, did you see your Uncle Rex? Everything's good with your Uncle Rex? And I don't know how to make him stop. I don't know what he's going on, like two and a half, three minutes, just like talking, talking. And that's not really long in real life, but it is so long if your father is in the room and you are naked with a heart on. I will say that. <laughs> That is a long amount of time, but it, I don't know how to, but I do get the satisfaction of seeing when it registers on his face, when he realizes what he's walked in on, because he's just like, hey, did you talk to your grandma about, <gasps> you know? 